The human family, once fluent in art, story, and mythic language, the primary conduits to the deep place, has fallen fast asleep, deluded by the ego mind and self-absorption. The human family now slumbers unaware, permanently distracted by entertainments and technologies of their own making, distracted from the experience of actual life. Yet existential awareness of awareness, the foundation of the universal force, rests beneath the surface of sleeping humanity. As the ascent of awareness begins anew, seeking a connection with solitary personal consciousness, seeking a new myth to reveal again the ultimate story. This is what is lacking. No one wonders anymore. Religion came into being, in my opinion, uh, to help us with our awe. And this is true in Hinduism, Buddhism, wherever you look. Uh, every society that's ever come into being on the planet has had to deal with the fact that we're related to a mysterious reality that we do not understand and are in wonder over. And this fact, this reality of being conscious of our consciousness and therefore being capable of this kind of wonder is the reason we have religions and the reason why societies need to have religions in order to help people relate to that wonder. This is something universal we're talking about here. Everybody, in whatever way, in whatever talk, in whatever language, experiences the awesome and the awe, and if they do, being one of the odd ones. We need to work especially on this awesomeness. And, and this is a new insight for many people trying to do Christian theology or Buddhist theology or Hindu theology or Muslim theology or Jewish theology. If you're going to use the word God, and I'll talk about Christianity, it's a devotional word. It's, it's like the word sweetheart or sweetie. It's, it's a word that has to do with loyalty with commitment, devotion. And so you might just say that the word God is simply a devotional word for reality. The awesome reality in the Bible. In the beginning, the awesome reality created the heavens and the earth. They called it God because they recommended that final reality for their worship. And so this was God. And this is the way to understand the whole Bible. You just go through the Bible and read the Psalms, straw out the word God, stick in the word reality. The Psalm makes sense. The word points to this final overallness, to this everythingness, not a thing, but the everythingness in which all things cohere. Each and everything is contained in this everythingness. Now, I'm using the word thing real generally to include Jesus and you and me and the squirrels and the birds and whatever. Each of us is a specific thing somewhere on the blackboard of reality. But the everythingness is not on this blackboard anywhere. It is the, the everythingness in which all things cohere. When the Bible and other Christian classics seem to talk about an otherworldly person, we need to remember that these writings are poetry. They're using mythic language. And we need to remember that the people who lived in pre-modern times had no difficulty using mythic language. They thought that was the way you talked about ultimate things. It's you and me that have trouble with mythic language because we've been taught scientifically that mythic language means bad, means wrong, means false or something, where that wasn't what they thought myth meant, if they even used the word myth. It was just, you talked about ordinary things in an ordinary way, and you talked about huge, overwhelming things in myth. 
and they just had, that is the way they worked at life. Jesus did. Moses did. Thomas Aquinas did. Luther did. Wesley did. It's only us, usins, that have trouble with that. It was their way of talking. In relation to existing, there is, for all existing persons, one schoolmaster, existence itself. Being in and for itself, the unconditional, has completely gone out of life, and reason has been substituted, so that being in and for itself, the unconditional, has not merely gone out, but has become ludicrous to humanity. We never get to see it, for it has gone out of life. Being in and for itself and reason relate to each other inversely. Where the one is, the other is not. When reason has completely penetrated all relationships and everything, being in and for itself will have completely gone out. It is my belief that the race must go through reason to the unconditional again. The essential sermon is one's own existence. Actuality cannot be conceptualized. Conceptualization is retrogression, a step backward, not a step forward. The primitive existence always contains a re-examination of the fundamental, the universally human. This is honesty in the deepest sense. Language has become meaningless or topsy-turvy. Years and years ago, we had a beautiful, beautiful chaplain in the community. He was a very holy man. And uh, he, uh, he couldn't say a sentence without in twice saying, Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our Lord and say, I, I'll buy our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but you can only say it once. And then after that, you've got to be about what it means. So watch the jargon. I, I found myself in a situation where, where actually very good people were using very unreal language and wondering why journalists just shook their head when they walked out of the room or wouldn't think of covering a religious conference. Wouldn't think of it. I don't blame them. It's a waste of time. They didn't understand what was being said themselves. So this, this, whole, this whole outreach to, to life around us and our own reactions to it, there are things I would not do. I would, I would consider that uh, a, a corruption of a kind of of simplicity of life that I don't want to be part of. One, quit the jargon. And I know you don't want to call it jargon because it's your holy language. And, uh, and uh, it's, it's your theological language, it's your canonical language, it's your um, mystical language, it's your spiritual language, forget it. The second thing is start with that person's life not the life out of which it came 2,000 years ago. They'll get there someday if it's important for them. They'll find it, and you can help them find it. But most of all, what is the great teaching that is missing at this time? There is an authentic language, which stripped of, of, of all the junk of the culture people recognize, and they want to talk about. What is old age? When are you old? Is it a number? Is it, is it physical health? What is age? And does it come at 60 or does it come at 16 for some people? All of that cut through it to, to, the, to the listener's question and, and, and just deal with that question. They'll, they have a path behind them. Uh, their parents have told them something, their churches have told them something, their schools have told them something. Make it their question, not the guidebook question that you're dealing with. So I guess the third thing is just be who you are and where you are and listen to where 
your listeners are. I believe that we needed humility right now, and I believe it more every day. I, humility enables me to live in a troubled world with peace of mind and a serene heart. And that is enough. Everybody, uh, these kids are looking for serenity. They are looking for, for development. They are looking, they want to do right. And they want to they wanna know how it is, how they'll know it's right, that kind of thing. Start with them. Uh, don't, don't start with, with a world that makes them yawn. Watch your language. <laughs>